So in the last lecture, we have looked at how to insert a new node anywhere in a circle double linked list. Hopefully everything was clear there. Now in this video, we will learn how to traverse a circle double linked list. Let's say this is our circle double linked list over here, and we want to traverse through this list. Here, the idea is very simple. We have to start from the first node, and by visiting each node, we print the value of the visited node to the console. So how do we know which one is the first node? So the answer is very simple. We get it from the head reference. We know that head reference to first node, so we can get the first node from the head reference. Starting from the first node, we visit each node and print its value. So here, the first node is node 1, so we are printing the value of node 1, which is 1 over here. And while visiting the node, we check if the current value of the node equals to tail or not. If so, we terminate the loop, because it means that we have reached the last node. Otherwise, we are continuing to the next node, which is node 2, and printing its value. And once again here, we are checking if this node is the last node in the circle double linked list or not. If not, then we are continuing to the next node. And one more time here, we are printing out the value of this node over here and checking if this node is the last node in the circle double linked list or not. So if it is not, then we are continuing to the next node. And when we reach the last node, we stop over here. So you might be interested why we are checking in each step if this is the last node or not. Because we know that last node points to the first node, so if we don't put this case over here, it will traverse infinitely. So to prevent this case, in each step we put if condition and we check that if this is the last node or not. And by doing this, we avoid infinite loop. Now let's look at the algorithm of traversal in circle double linked list. The algorithm for traversal looks like this. First we check head value. If it is null, then we return because there is no node to traverse through it. Otherwise, we loop from the tail to head and print the current value. And we compare if the tail equals to the current value of the node. If so, we terminate it. Otherwise, we continue to the loop until we reach the last node in the circle double linked list. Now, based on this algorithm over here, let's switch to Visual Studio Code and create traversal method for circle double linked list. So here again, inside circle double linked list class, we will create a new method after the after the insertion method. So here I will declare a new method which is called traversal circle double linked list. Alert. Circle double linked list. So by default it takes self parameter. Then according to our algorithm, the first step is to check head value. So if self dot head is now, it means that we don't have any element in our circle double linked list, so we cannot traverse through it. So here I will print out a message saying that there is not any node for traversal. Else, we will continue to traverse through circle double linked list. So here I will create temporary node as always, and I will assign first node to this temporary node, which is self head. We know that head stores the physical location of first node. Then while temp node, I'll print out the value of temp node. And as we said, we need to put if condition in each step over here because the last node of circular double linked list points to the first node. So uh, we need this if condition over here to prevent infinite loop. So if temp node equals to self tail, we know that tail stores the last node's physical location. So here, here I will put break. Otherwise, I will set temp node to the temp node next. So with this, our traversal function is complete. So now let's see how this is working in practice. So as always, we created a circle double linked list from the previous lecture. So here we are creating circle double linked list and we are inserting some values to it. Here, after printing out circle double linked list, I will call our traversal function to see how this is working. Circle double linked list dot traversal and let's save and run our code. As you see, the circle double linked list is like this. So by traversing through it, we are visiting each and every element of it and printing the value. So the first element is zero, then the next element is five, then the next element two, and the last element is one. So when we reach one, we stop over here. So this case prevents infinite loop. Now you might be interested what is the time and space complexity for this operation over here. As always, we will start from the first line of code. So in the first line, we have if condition, which checks head value. And we know that checking head value and printing message takes all one time complexity. 
So this part of code over here will take O1 time complexity. Then we are continuing to the else part. In the else part, we are creating temporary node. So creating a temporary node and assigning a value to it takes O1 time complexity. So this line of code over here will take O1 time complexity. Then we have loop over here. So we know that looping through any given collection takes O n time complexity. So this part will take O n time complexity. Even though this if condition over here takes O one time complexity, the whole loop will take O n time complexity because this if condition and assignment over here is applicable for each step in the loop. So that's why it takes O n time complexity. Now, if we combine all these complexities over here, we will get O n time complexity because O one time complexities over here are so we are eliminating them and we get O n time complexity. Now the space complexity is O1 because here we are just creating one temporary node and we know that creating a one temporary node takes O1 space complexity. So the space complexity for traversal takes O1 space complexity. So this is all for this lecture. Uh, so in this lecture we have learned how can we traverse through circle double linked list and we learned what is the time and space complexity for this method over here. Now in the next lecture let's see how can we reverse traverse through circle double linked list. See you in the next lecture.